Greetings. Computers, phones, smart voice assistants, and other devices use human language to communicate with us humans. That language exchange can be in audio form, but more often it's in written and textual form. Today I'm going to show you examples of how human-computer interaction breaks down when the user is a bilingual individual. Computing is struggling to diversify its ranks, and without a diverse workforce, we run the risk of creating products that poorly serve a diverse user base. As you will see in my talk, products that on the surface seem fine for monolingual users break down when used by bilingual users. I claim this is a side effect of a homogeneous workforce that is inadvertently ignoring the richness that exists in the majority of the users of computing technology. Let me start with a quick definition. Bilinguals are those individuals who use two or more languages or dialects in their everyday lives. It's worth pointing out that while my presentation talks about bilinguals, everything that I'm going to show and talk about here, it's also, tr also true for people that speak more than two languages. Turns out there's a lot of myth and misinformation about bilingualism. One is that bilingualism is not a common phenomenon. It's an exception to the rule, so to speak. The reality is that 60% of the world population speaks more than one language. And in Europe, close to 30% speak at least three languages. Here in the US, around 20% of the population speak more than one language, but some believe that this estimate is low, it's an undercount because of how the data is collected. But just as important, the percentage of bilingual users in the US has been steadily increasing from 11% in 1980 to just over 20% in 2011, and we shall see the results from the 2020 census to see where the number is today. We also know that bilinguals follow some very well-known patterns of communication. For example, bilinguals code switch, meaning that they often change language in mid-sentence. To the untrained eye, this seems random, and people thought it was a sign of a lack of education. We now know that code switching follows well-defined patterns, and that the phrases that are inserted from one language into the other often conform to the grammatical rules of both languages. Today, we understand that bilinguals that code switch demonstrate a level of linguistic sophistication that goes beyond someone speaking a single language. Bilinguals also borrow words and phrases from one language to use in another, and sometimes they change the base language altogether. There's even what is called domain-specific language, where somebody speaking in one language uses words from another language from another domain. For example, when I taught computer science at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayagüez, my classes were in Spanish, but a lot of my technical language of computing, which I learned in the US, was in English. So my domain-specific language, computing, was in English, and I used it to complement my classes in Spanish. The key message is the following. Bilinguals have more than one language at their disposal, when they're communicating, when they're interacting with others, and all of those languages are active at the same time. We don't switch one to the other, we just have them all available at the same time. And that statement should stand in stark contrast with how computers work. If you play with a computer lately, you will notice that the language setting is typically a choice of select one of these languages. From that point forward, the computer is monolingual. The systems are designed to communicate in only one language at a time, and that places them at odd with how bilinguals communicate. And these settings are typically available at installation time or buried deep into some rarely used settings that you'd never see. Another area where we encounter this is in keyboard settings in web processors and text messaging applications. If you're a bilingual and communicate in both languages, you end up doing a dance between keyboards to be able to communicate effectively. Some bilinguals simply forego the use of features like autocorrect because it creates more problems than it solves. As a bilingual communicating with other bilinguals, the computer gets in the way. In the last few years, software designers have added the ability to change dictionaries and language settings in specific applications and contexts, for example, browsers. But the choice is still largely you use one language or the other. Changing the language of a user interface is often a task that is considered under the globalization and localization of interfaces. Globalization is the process of designing a user interface 
by identifying and separating those parts that are different for each country or culture. Language is often one of those features. Localization, on the other hand, is the process of making that change, is taking that part from one country and putting the part in place for the other. It is no surprise then that the notion of using multiple languages is often paired up with country or nationality. Multilingual sometimes is found under international features, confusing bilingual individuals as people who must be international. It's almost as if the interface is saying, you speak more than one language, you must not be from around here. Allow me to show you some more examples of how technology ignores bilinguals. The examples are all based on personal experience as an English-Spanish bilingual user. They come in four areas of language use, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Let's start with reading. The Spanish language uses a few characters set outside of those used in the English language. Spanish keyboards have a separate key for the ñ, the N, N with the tilde, and have support for the question and exclamation marks as well as the accents for the vowels that are typical in Spanish. By the way, the ñ is not just a funny N with a Mexican hat like some stu students call it. It really is a different character and it makes a difference on the words. The words that just having an N versus an ñ change meaning completely. Mono and moño is one example. Mono is monkey. Moño is a hair bun. If you think that little hat, the tilde, makes no difference, you might want to ask NPR why they had to delete this tweet. Software often requires a special setting to display these characters correctly. Needless to say, my name, Perez Quinones, is often printed in some creative ways. The funny thing is that this is an easy fix. All of these interfaces are displayed over the web, and there's one line of code that is needed to make that display correctly rather than what you see on the screen. Conversely, writing the Spanish characters can also trip up software. Entering my name into software often triggers errors because I am using quote unquote illegal characters. And needless to say, this is just Spanish that has only a handful of characters different from English. Can you imagine what it would be like with other languages like Arabic, Russian, and Chinese? Another issue is the pronunciation, particularly of names. Your name is part of your identity. In a society like the US with so many multinational influences, it can be tricky to pronounce names correctly. I know this because I've heard my name pronounced in many different ways, but I'm very accommodating because people try, they're trying to pronounce my name correctly, and their phonetic sounds in Spanish that are foreign to English speakers, just like their sounds in English that are foreign to me, difficult for me to pronounce. But when it comes to my computer pronouncing my name, it really shouldn't be an issue of what language I'm using or even what language the computer is using. The computer should be able to pronounce my name correctly. Let me play you my name pronounced in English and Spanish using the Apple Speech Synthesizer. The first is an English pronunciation. The next is a Spanish pronunciation. Manuel. Manuel. Both of those sounds were generated from the very same computer using the very same software. If nothing else, the system should not change how it pronounces my name depending on the language it's using. My name has one pronunciation and there's no technological reason why it's pronouncing it wrong. If you're from Spain or Latin America, you know that people named Manuel like me often go by an Apollo nickname of Manolo. I won't even insult the Manolos watching this by playing the English pronunciation of my Apollo. It's awful. I cringe every time I hear one of the systems try to pronounce my name. This is not a technological problem. As I showed you in the audio, the system can pronounce my name correctly. This is a socio-technical problem that we need to address. You can imagine that if a system has been fine-tuned to pronounce names one way, voice recognition follows closely behind. Try to use one of these smart assistants to call someone in my family, and what you get is often the comedy sketch similar to Abbott and Costello's who's on first. When trying to call Olga, my wife, I have to pronounce her name as Alga. And when she tries to call me by saying, Siri, call Manolo, Siri often responds by saying, I can't find Madonna in your address book. Note that if I switch the device to Spanish, all of these problems go away but I am forced to use a device in Spanish only for everything. And I live in North Carolina, and there are a lot of businesses that I can't pronounce their names in Spanish because their name's in English. 
How about accents? Another myth about bilinguals is that if you have an accent, you're somehow part of a different class status or your intelligence in question. Will Siri, Alexa, and Google understand accents and make some weird inferences based on the accents? Let me play you this audio from my friend, Dr. Carlos Evia. Alexa, ¿qué hora es? Son las diez y cincuenta y ocho. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 10.58 a.m. Alexa, ¿qué hora es? It's 10.59 a.m. In this example, the system replied in Spanish to a Spanish question, in English to an English question, and in English to a Spanish question that was asked with a heavy fake accent. The system understood one language and replied in another. And Alexa is not the only one. Google Home is also known for some odd exchanges across languages. I've seen this exchange happen. Hey Google, ¿qué hora es? And Google replies, ¿qué hora es? Is what time is it in Spanish? Google understood the question, but proceeded to translate it for me, not to answer it. The good news is, these systems understand both languages. That's pretty cool. The bad news is they're responding in a way that is not socially expected by bilingual, and it doesn't follow the language conventions used by bilinguals. So I've shown you how bilinguals are disadvantaged when it comes to reading, writing, listening, and speaking with computing systems. I wish I could tell you the problem is just there. If it was, the next update of the software will fix this and we're done. But the problem is deeper once you start looking at information organization and classifications. As a bilingual person, I don't live in two distinct worlds. Instead, I experience the world from two points of view at the same time. I can understand multiple languages. Consider the following situation. I'm going to buy a birthday card for a bilingual member of my family. I go to a famous online store looking for an e-card. I would have to search or navigate occasions, birthday, daughter, but I would only find in there English cards because the Spanish cards are at a separate top tier classification. So I would also have to search under Spanish, but there is no set of occasion. Under Spanish, you see all the cards in Spanish and I would have to sort of find the one that is about birthday, all of them in one category. So for me, a bilingual person, buying a card for another bilingual person, I have to look for a card in two different places. And I cannot even compare the two. I cannot even say, this is the Spanish, this is the English, which one I like better, because they're not in the same place. So it seems like the use case for building this interface was more influenced by monolingual users, ignoring the fact that 60% of the world population can use two or more languages. These things add up. And it's easy to see how this type of language disenfranchisement of bilinguals can spill from technology to other social and political systems. Let me give you one last example. Google News displays news in a combination of language and region. This is a step in the right direction. It used to be that you selected Espanol and you would get news feeds from España and Latin America, even when you were in the United States. Today, at least, you get to pick the region and the language. So I could get news from the United States in English or news from Estados Unidos in Espanol. Why not United States in English and Espanol? Why not both? I speak both. Why can't I see news together? You might be surprised that selecting the language still shows some algorithmic bias and editorial decisions based on the language choice. Even though I'm in the United States, I'm still going to see news that are influenced by the type of language I'm looking at. Basically, I get a different set of news depending on which language I want to use. Let me show you some examples. March 13th, 2020. The top story on both sides is about the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. The English side, however, is about the conflict between the House Democrats and the White House. But the Spanish side, it's all about the meaning of the declaration of a national emergency in the United States by the president. That's two very different perspectives. And the rest of the stories have little to do with each other across the languages. This week, August 16th, 2020, I captured the top stories a couple of days ago. On the English side, the top story is about the turmoil with the postal service. On the Spanish side, the top story is about accusations against a church leader in the Hispanic community. The rest of the stories have some commonality, but the organization of these, these stories makes sense from a one language point of view. 
if you only speak Spanish, then the likelihood that the stories on the right are right for you is pretty high. If you speak both, why don't you see both? Why do I have to see stories in one language or the other? I can read them both. But even if the stories are in common, but have different point of view, I would find I see them all without having to switch interface. I don't wanna to have to go into different rooms to read stories in different languages. If there's this significant difference between two languages, that is yet one more reason that I want both languages intermixed. I'm bilingual, I can read them both. Let me decide if I wanna read news stories from Univision or Fox News. My choice, if you only read English, then you don't get to see Univision, and that's fine. If you only read Spanish, then you don't get to see Fox News, and that's fine. But if you can read them both, let me see them both. Let me be more informed by seeing all the news stories that I can read with the languages that I can read and write. Linguist Max Wainwright said that a language is a dialect with an army and a navy. To my friends building computer systems, we're becoming the military force imposing language use on the bilingual world. We're creating products that force bilingual users to use one language at a time and ignores the cultural wealth that bilinguals like me provide. To the educators training the future computer scientists and software developers, please insist that your students at least, at the very least, take some foreign language classes, maybe even do a minor. We're building products used by the whole world population at large, and that population is 60% bilingual. The least our developers should do is have a passing knowledge of how bilingual people live and communicate. Imagine if my experience reading news and searching for information was not limited by the computer interface. Imagine that I could interact with others using the natural mixing of languages that is humanly possible. Imagine if the computer as a mediator would present me information in all the languages I can understand instead of feeding me piecemeal information and hiding others because I haven't switched to the right language. I would like technology to help us close the gap that already exists in society between us and them. I would like to see a future where my smart assistant can pronounce my name correctly and understand it if it's pronounced using the pronunciation of its language of origin. I would like all software developers to understand that languages are in foreign and that character sets are in illegal. Many of our neighbors, family, friends, often use more than one language. It's time our technology does too. Thank you.